games before losing the heartbreaker to North Alabama in the final seconds of the Division II NCAA championship game, outscored their opponents by 28 points a game that year, beat Grand Valley State Michigan 34-3, stunned Division I AA Liberty away 23-7, clinched the PSAC West title, come from behind victory dead for 31-24, I can be twice wiped out two touchdown deficits to knock off and beat New Haven 38-35 on the road in the national semifinal, and then beat North Dakota and Miller Stadium in the semifinals 21-6. The team trailed 34-24, entering those final minutes in Florence, Alabama, the uh, Lions home field, by the way, and then uh, a comeback before 15,631 fans Michael Mann scored in a one-yard run, followed a successful onside kick. Michael Geary, 34-yard field goal tied the score, 45 seconds left, but it wasn't to be, they came up short, 41 to 34. But what a game and what a team. The achievements, they set a school record of 13 wins, which is in the equal now. Captured the PSAC and Northeast Region titles, were recognized as the Lambert Cup winner and produced three first-team All-Americans and 14 All-PSA CD honorees. Uh, I'm going to, um, at this time, uh, before we introduce Jerome here, to speak on behalf of the team, we received from the Signetti family a, a statement that uh, they would like us to hear today uh, on behalf of Coach Signetti, from the Signetti family, quote, Dad loved all his teams and his players. They were like family to him. Picking one team to be the first to be inducted into the IUP Athletics Hall of Fame is difficult, but the 1993 team is a great choice because it exemplified the ideals that our dad held true. The team was determined to succeed at great leadership, displaying extraordinary character, and showing toughness to overcome adversity. Like our dad, the 1993 IUP football team was driven to represent IUP in the best way it could. We've heard from team members how much they felt blessed to have played for our dad, but we also know that he felt blessed to coach them. Induction is a fitting tribute to both our dad and the team for their success on the field and their character off it. End quote. Many family. And now speaking on behalf of the team, Ramon Smith. Ramon, your thoughts about coach and about the team. Thank you, Jack. Excited to be here today. Honored to represent the 1993 IUP football team. Footnote, before I get started, I did say team. So that means that I'm representing 90 or so players. So bear with me in terms of timing. I'll work it out, but just bear with me. Two things that stand out as far as our team goes. The first is the power of leadership. The second thing we learned is to embrace and appreciate adversity. So leadership. I think we all would agree, team, that we learned how to be great leaders from the late, great Coach Frank Smith, AKA Big Guy. Boy, clap. <laughs> Most of us came to the IUP as boys, but we left as great men because of the Big Guy's leadership and our coaching staff leadership. Coach Sinetti was a man of God, and he lived his life that way. So what did that look like? That looked like giving people two or three chances when they may not deserve it. He was someone who loved to serve and develop others. That's why his ass was so big. We all have a beginning here. We all have an end here. But it's what we do in between those days that counts. Coach Sinetti impacted thousands of individuals during his time. 
Think about it for a second. The number of Division I coaches, the number of NFL coaches, the number of NFL players that he developed right here at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. He also had a great vision. He was a man of vision, foresight with insight based on vision. He had great vision, and his vision was to create a culture of champions. And what that means is not just on the field, but off the field, in the classroom, but most importantly, internally. What is your character like? What is your integrity? That's what he was about. So as you break down that spirit of champion, I think about talent, and he recruited talent from all over. But he happened to go into the neighborhoods, the lower income communities, what we call the projects, where some people thought he was crazy, but they didn't understand his vision and the quest to find talent, but most importantly, to develop, nurture that talent into what? Champions. That's what he was all about. Everything he did was about creating that environment of champions. We traveled like champions. We were coached like champions. We practiced like champions. And I attribute all that to Coach Lennon. We all graduated. Now again, guys from the neighborhood, most of us now have graduated and are very successful in our lives because of one man's vision, his foresight, his insight based on hindsight. The second thing, the second key ingredient that we learn is to embrace and appreciate adversity. My mom said there are three guarantees in life. We will what? Die. We will pay taxes. And we will face adversity. The big man was saying character or adversity builds what? It builds character. And I think that's what made this team so special because we were built and pressure tested and we're ready for war because as you said, Coons, Coach Igneti prepared us for battle. So what did that look like? When we came in as freshmen, it was a whole different world. You talk about, hey, you want to be the best? Because you know you want to have different expectations? We weren't ready for that. So that was a big adjustment. And we learned quickly, you can cry, you can pout, or you can do what? Embrace and appreciate adversity. What else did that look like? Fellas, you agree. Our two-a-days, three-a-days in the summertime was unbelievable. I can't even describe how difficult it was. Our indoor workouts, we had Division I players from Clemson, LSU, Penn State, that said, man, this is what y'all do. We said, yeah. What we do, some of them couldn't make it. It was so crazy, some of them would run right out the door and then come back. I've seen them all night. I've seen them all night. Our practices, the talent we had, the defensive players, the offensive players, every day we were going toe to toe, preparing us for battle. And no game in this division could really epitomize what that was all about until we could play the game. So I want to kind of slow this down just a little bit to set the stage. New Haven was projected to win it all. They were the best team. Hostile environment. I say, stop. I can't even say the word. That's how hostile it was. Stop, right? Throwing stuff at us, calling us out of our name. Crazy. And then they got off to a tremendous start. That happened to be a game when I ran across the middle. I thought I ran man, but it was on. I got hit right in the sternum was spitting up blood and had to crawl to the sidelines. So we go in at halftime. This is what we heard. Yes! <laughs> hey! We knew it was going to be a battle! We knew this was going to be tough! What did you expect? Hey! We're going to go back in the second half! And we're going to check down! We get the ball! Took on his 
things we went through was searching for a moment in that time. We shut that crowd up, went on to win that game, and the rest was history. I'll close with this, Jack. I'll close with this. You show me someone who was cut from his high school basketball team, I'll show you my majority. You show me someone who was drafted in the sixth round, ran a 5 1 5 2 the 40, was last on the depth chart, I'll show you the GOAT, Tom Brady. And you show me a man who was a cancer survivor, who had a vision, who built this program from scratch. He didn't go to one national championship, he went to two national championships. And turn these men or these boys into men. I'll show you the late great coach Frank Signetti. <laughs> and you show me some boys who took on this persona and became men that learned to fight, grind, push, tug, whatever it takes to win, not just on the field. But in a game of life, and I'll show you, stay in 1993, fellow. Let's give a hand.